Hello fellow hunters of the blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to Heavy Contrast, a series where I try to paint models to the highest standards possible using just contrast paints and edge highlights. And in this episode I'm going to tackle the last of the Sisters of Battle Orders, that is the Order of the Bloody Rose. So let's get cracking. As you can see, we're starting from a base coat of Wraithbone, and the first step will be to base coat all the leather, that is the corset and the gloves, of the red leather that is. And for this I'm going to use Flesh Tourist Rain. Just be very careful because we want it to just be on the leather parts, we don't want it to hit any of the armor because that will be another color. And Wraithbone is not the easiest color to layer over if you make mistakes. On the leather charge I'm going to base coat all the armor. For this I'm using a mix of two parts, Blood Angels Red and one part Flesh Series Red. As always, brush this in the direction you want the shadows to go. Do section by section. And once you finish a full section, go around looking for areas of pulling like this one and just remove it, remove all the excess with a clean brush. Our red armor is almost dry, it's dry enough that I can go into the next step, that is shading a bit more the red leather because I wanted to make them a bit more different. For this I'm using a mix of one part Black Templar and four parts Contrast Medium. Just apply this all over our red leather parts. Remember that is the corset and the gloves. Again, be careful around the red armor. We don't want any of the black in there. Both the leather and the armor are almost dry. Now I'm going to base coat the inside of, of her robes. For this I'm using Corax White because of course they will be bright white. So just go with Corax White and knit up all the inside of the robes. Again, of course, be extremely careful when approaching the armor. We really don't want to mess that up. With our base coat of Corax White now done, I'm going to apply Apothecary White all over it. As before, be very careful all around the red armor. The Apothecary White is drying and I'm going to shade the white a bit more using the Space Wolf's Grey. With the Space Wolf's Grey we will just do a richer shade. So I will just pick up the holes here and also define the edge where the cloth meets the armor. Be very careful. I'm now going to base coat all the areas that will be black. For this I'm using downstone. Just take your downstone and base coat the outside of the ropes. The layer of downstone is now completed and I'm going to apply a layer of Black Templar all over the black parts of the mini. As always, brush the Black Templar from the top to the bottom. And watch out for any pulling if you found that it's too much at some point.
with the black applied, I'm going to start highlighting all the areas that we have applied contrast to, and starting with the white. For this I'm using Rufu and Grey. I'm feeling it to this sort of consistency you see is a bit transparent and we'll just apply it like so to all these post areas. Move the brush in the direction you want the highlights to be this time. Like so. This way it will be thinner when you start and thicker when you end, creating a nice blend. And for the rest of the details, we just do a simple edge highlight all around it. Our highlight of Fu and Grey is done. It's now to move into the final highlight for the white, and that is white. With pure white, I will just do a central edge highlight on every ridge. Like so. And also I will edge highlight every part. The white cloths are finished and now I'm going to highlight all the armor. For this I'm going to use one rather red and I'm just going to do a simple edge highlight. As well as an edge highlight in the more rounded part, I'm going to do a glaze of white rather red to get the spot highlight. We're really aiming for this sort of consistency. Load out your brush, take out all the excess on a paper towel, and just move your brush towards the center where you want like so, the highlight to be. You will probably need, will need to do this a couple of times. Our highlight of Wild of the Red is done, and I'm going to move into the next step. This is Fire Dragon Bright. Again, just picking all the edges, but this time concentrating the Fire Dragon Bright just in the corners, picking the rivets and high spots. And where we did our spot highlight on the knees and rounded parts, I'm just going to do a dot of Fire Dragon Bright in the middle of that area, as well as the line where there is. There, on the thighs.
The final step on, on highlighting our armor will be doing dots of Luganath orange in all the corners and rivets. So I will just pick small dots of Luganath. With the armor done, I'm going to move into the corset. For this, I'm going to highlight it first using Wastaka Red. For the next highlight on the red leather parts, I'm going to use a squeak orange. For the next highlight on the leather, I'm going to do a 50-50 mix of a squeak orange and luganath orange. To finish off the red leather, I'm going to do small dots of Luganath orange just in the very, very sharpest highlight. This would also help give the impression of a shiny leather piece. With the red leather and the red armor now completed, the only step left that is base coated is the black. For this I'm going to first do an edge highlight using mechanical standard grey. For next highlight on the black cloth, I'm going to use Dunstone. What I will try to do is the same edge highlight I did with Mechanicus, but as thin as I can. So try to keep the Dunstan inside of the Mechanicus line. Our highlight of Dunstan is completed and I'm going to move to the next step. That step is Administration Grey and as usually we are just going to do the same thin edge highlight but just concentrate it towards the tips of, the fo of each fold.
And finally, I'm just going to take a full and grain, just do a very small dot of this, where each fold meets the corner of the rope. With that done, off camera, I also neaten up with Ravebone all the other bits that are not metallic. All the leather, the face, the hair, from all these splotches that naturally occur when you are painting the armor and the ropes. And now I'm going to apply the contrast layers all over those parts, starting with her face. For this I'm using Gilman Flesh. I'm now going to apply a skeleton horde over all the parchment of the purity seals. And for the for all the leather that is not armor, I'm going to use a two to one mix of Gorgrant Affair and Contrast Medium. It is two parts of Gorgrant Affair and one part of Contrast Medium. When the when the skeleton hold is dry, you can you can apply bulbous pink over the purity seal wax. And finally, for the hair, I'm going to use a one-to-one -one mix of a skeleton hold and the yellow. And yellow. When the Gilliman flesh dries, I can shade the face a bit more using Fire Slayer Flesh. What I do with Fire Slayer Flesh is run it into the eyes. Under her nose. And into her mouth. I'm going to start with the fruit seal and particularly with the wax. For this I'm just going to do the small dots of Shakti Bone. And for the parchment I'm going to use a screaming skull and just do and it's highlight all across it and pick up the raised folds. Now I'm going to highlight it even more using palette witch flesh. doing an edge highlight, but again also picking up the folds, trying to do a very thin line on both bases. As a final highlight, I'm going to take white and do very small dots where each fold connects to the outer edge of the parchment. Obviously being a purity seal, it needs to have some scripture in it. And for this I'm using Wildwood. But also with, with Wildwood, I'm going to define the line that separates each piece of parchment from the other. Very carefully. Like that. Did you make a mistake like I did? Clean your brush and soak it up really quickly. For the scripture, we're just going to do some squiggly lines with Wildwood. And 
Moving into the brown leather, I'm going to do an edge highlight using Tau Light Ochre. The next highlight on the leather would be Angor Flesh. Again, do an edge highlight, but taking less area than before. So you concentrate it, in this case, towards the corners. And in the case of the strap here on his, on her, leg towards the center if you did a highlight on the on the thigh put the highlight on the leather there the last hand on the brown leather will be push up the bone and i will just do very small dots of push up the bone in each corner With the leather done, it's time to move into our face. And for the first highlight on the face, I'm using Flate One Flesh. I pick up the most prominent parts like the nose, top of the cheeks, eyebrows. If you happen to mess it up like I did, again, wipe it off quickly. And you should be okay. If you need, you may need to reapply a couple of highlights, but overall, shouldn't be much of a problem. I'm not going to use palette with flesh and do exactly the same. But of course, concentrating it in a smaller area. With the face now highlighted, I'm going to take Volopus Pink and thin it down to a very thin glaze consistency. You can check it. Here it's, it's, it's almost invisible. Look. There. And I'm going to apply this as a glaze on the nose and on the side of the cheeks. I will use a slightly more intense mix and apply it and apply it on her lips. With 
with those glazes done, I'm going to re-highlight a couple of places on her face. Something with the nose, I will just pick up the tip and also the side of the nostrils here, like that. not strictly necessary but it really gives a very realistic look and I will also do a small dot of palette witch flesh on her lower lip and now it's time to paint her eyes and first of all I'm going to base coat them using palette witch flesh you should try to avoid using white for the eyes palette witch flesh is much much better color Now I'm going to pick the, the center of the eyes with a dot of Black Templar. And now I'm going to try and paint a white reflection inside the black pupil of the eye. But then just taking white, and I will try to do a very small dot inside, like that. <laughs> With her face finished, I'm going to move into the hair. For this, the first highlight would be Shabdi Bone. For the next time, I think I'm going to use Palette Witch Flesh. The final step on her hair will be some dots of white to give the impression that the hair is shining. I will just do those dots here around the middle section. It's now time to move into base coating all the metal. For this I'm going to use Iron Breaker for all the steel parts and Retributor Armor. And Retributor Armor for all the gold parts. With the metal base coat applied, I'm going to shade them. First starting with the gold, for that I'm using Gilliman Flesh. For the steel parts I'm going to use a mix of one part Black Templar and three parts Contrast Medium.
and the final step will be an edge highlight on all the metal parts, gold and silver, using Stormhole Silver. And with that last step done on the base painted, she's finished. And this is probably one of my favorite Sisters of Battle. So I really hope you like this video. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Do you want to decide what I paint in the channel or want direct feedback from me? Then consider Patreon. You have a link to my Patreon in the description below. Patreon helps me do all the cool projects that I want to make. It helps me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid. No content will ever be hidden behind a paywall. But it's a nice way to help me. And you will get something back for your generosity. As I said, guys, thank you very much for watching. And a special thank you to Michael Boyer, Victor Domen, JT Butler, Sasha Park, Eric Edge, G Force, Dr. V, ALJN, Jonathan Ekelun, Leonard Lindemann, Kieran O'Morthyl, Kid Leonard, and Kevin Sulas for being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like these fine folks, join my Patreon and take control.